sing together from our gospel hymns and song, hymn number 99. Hymn number 99. There is a victory within my soul. There is victory within my soul. For the spirit with me abides. Let the waves of temptation roll. Jesus keeps me whatever betides. Though the conflict be fierce and long, though the tempter my heart assail, in my weakness, yet I am strong. For with Jesus I will ever prevail. I have victory over sin. I have victory over grave. Even death now has lost its stink. Hallelujah. I know I am saved. Victory, victory, victory in my soul. I have glorious victory since Jesus took control. Victory, victory, sweeping like a flood. I have glorious victory through Jesus' blood.
But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of the Prophet Isaiah The Book of the Prophet Isaiah Chapter 11 Chapter 11 And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathrus, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west, they shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dryshod. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Chapter 12 And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Chapter 13 The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, 
that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye shall not spare children." And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. You have just listened, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray.
Praise the Lord. Joyful, happy, blessed, emancipated people. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for all you've done already. And we know you're not a still, old, ancient God that has nothing new to do. Lord, we pray tonight afresh, anew. Empower your people tonight in Jesus' name. Miracles of salvation, conversion, justification, miracles of healing, deliverance, emancipation. Do it in every life. And be glorified in every life tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, I bring a message from the word at several times. But we need to understand God's plan, God's provision, and God's message of working. For this present time, how does he bring emancipation, salvation, justification, and bringing people unto himself? Now, we need to understand, at the time of Moses, there was a plan, there was a process, and there was a provision. After Moses ended, and then you come to the end of the old covenant, Christ came. And now, everything God gives to man, any man, in Israel, in Africa, in America, it doesn't go through Moses anymore. Moses came as a preliminary avenue or channel. Christ has now come. Actually, the ministry of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ, the provision from Christ had been ordained before the beginning of the world. And Moses just came so that he'll occupy the time, the period that there was, the one that had been ordained from the beginning, before the beginning of the world, is the real issue. We need to understand. Otherwise, there will be people after Christ has come that will still go to Moses and they say, Moses, what do I do to be saved? And then he goes through what Moses had said. Kill that lamb. Apply the blood. Put it on the lintels of your houses. And if you follow that, you'll be saved. Not now. You can't be saved now by following Moses. Now, when you consider all the religions of the world, Moses came first. And Moses is higher than all the religions of the world. If today the religion of Moses cannot save you, save me, or save anyone, any other religion, knowing that they are not even as good as the one of Moses to deliver a whole nation, 
to get them through the Red Sea, to provide water for everyone out of the rock. If that of Moses, higher, greater than any religion, if that of Moses cannot save you today, no other can save you today. That's why we're looking at the message today, salvation is coming to you. Amen. Let me hear a global amen. amen. Salvation, redemption, amen. justification, amen. conversion, coming through the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking to you tonight on the present emancipation that determines eternal destiny. The emancipation we have, we're not here to play games. We're not here for entertainment. We're here to prepare for eternity. The present emancipation that determines eternal destiny. Look at this, Acts chapter 13, reading from verse 38. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Christ, Messiah, Jesus, Emmanuel, the Lamb of God, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Through this man, the Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Emancipator, Emmanuel, God with us, the one announced before the beginning of the world, through this man, the forgiveness of sin is preached unto you. Look at verse 39. And by him, no other name. By him, no other sacrifice. By him, all that believe are justified from all things. Look at this, look at this. From which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. We don't put Moses and Christ side by side and say, if this one does not help, that other one will help. We don't put Christ and the founder of any religion side by Christ and say, if this will not save, will not justify, will not forgive, will not pave the way to heaven, this other one will. It says from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. That's why we're here today for serious matter. You will be saved. Amen. You'll be justified. Amen. What does it mean to be justified? You've done bad, bad, sinful things. And now you come to the court of the Almighty. That's the court also appear there. There is no supreme court after his court. There is no appeal court after his court. What he says is final. And when you come there, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you cannot plead innocent. And now, before the hammer hits the judgment platform, Christ comes in and he says, I'll forgive him, I'll save him, I'll set him free. And you accept, you know, that in yourself you could not be saved. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no respite? No. All these for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone must save. And you rely on him and trust him and believe him. That's how salvation comes to you. And it's coming tonight. Amen. I'm talking to somebody that says it's coming tonight. Amen. The problem of humanity is the problem, allow me to talk, 
of the monkey. The monkey has a problem. It sees the banana and the ground nuts inside that glass jug. And monkeys love bananas. They love ground nuts. And puts hands there and grips that thing. And wants to pull it out. Once he closes the hand, the mouth of the jug will not be wide enough. But if he draws that thing, then his hand can come up. But he holds the thing. He's holding it there. He tried to pull the hand. He said, this one, I will hold on to this one till I die. Yes, and he will die. Because the hunter will come while he's still trying to pull his hand and gripping that thing. The hunter will come and take his life. There are people like they hold on to an idea like a monkey. They hold on to an opinion like a monkey. They think their work and they think what they do in obedience to the law of Moses will save them. They paint and they hang the Ten Commandments on the side of the wall. And they say, once I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, I am saved. Not today. By the obedience of the law. Those commandments that you put on the wall, by that shall no man be saved. It says, from which ye could not be justified, ye could not be saved, ye could not be redeemed by the law of Moses. But Christ is here, the Lamb of God. He died for you. And as you trust him tonight, and you believe him tonight, and say, yes, Lord, not the works of my hand can atone for me, can atone for my sin. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Salvation has come to you. Once again, the present salvation, the present emancipation that determines eternal destiny. Look at verse 44 there. In verse 44, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. They heard in the previous verses I read that Moses could not save them. And David in the Psalms could not save them. And they heard that all the sacrifices that Moses had done and Aaron had assisted could not save them. The next Sabbath day, almost all the whole city came together. They wanted to hear that again so that they will be saved. That's why you are here tonight. You came so that you will be saved. You'll be saved in Jesus' name. Any amen there? Three things we're looking at. Number one, personal emancipation that decides endless happiness the emancipation that is not just for today not for tomorrow the emancipation that decides endless happiness number two popular emulations that destroy enduring health Number three, promises embraced. The promise of God that he gives us now in Christ. Promises embraced determine our everlasting habitation. Where we live forever, where we dwell forever, where we abide forever, the glorious place. That paradise, that heaven, and the holy place of God, the abode of the Almighty, and the abode of the holy angels of God, the promises were embraced. The promises were here, 
The promises will believe, the promises will personalize, and the promises will internalize. The promises that we embrace that will determine our everlasting habitation. I pray you will be there. Amen. I said I pray you will be there. Amen. Look at it, one, two, three, and then the gate opens and we get in. I said, we get in. Yeah. Number one, personal emancipation. Personal emancipation. As you breathe by yourself, personal, to keep alive, emancipation is personal. And as you eat by yourself, what daddy eats will not keep you alive. What your children eat will not keep you alive. It is what you take personally. Personally. Personal emancipation that decides endless happiness. Look at this. Luke chapter 15 verse 7. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. When you say they don't need repentance, that's what they think. The Pharisees were there. They think. I don't need repentance. I can recite for you Psalm 119. And they thought the recitation of the longest psalm in the book of Psalms will give them that justification. And they say, I don't, I don't need to repent. Nicodemus was asking, how can man be born again when he's old? How can a man be born again? Are you a ruler in Israel? And you have gone through all the various stages of becoming a leader in Israel. And you don't know except a man be born again. He cannot see. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. The 99 righteous people, self-righteous people. The 99 Look at me. This is how my heart is. I don't do anybody any good. I don't wish anybody any good. I'm a nice person from birth. I was born into salvation. I don't know about that. The Bible doesn't know about that. From birth, I was born into righteousness and justification. The Bible doesn't know anything about that, but they think they're righteous. Well, but one sinner... One evil man, one person that says, I am wrong. I'm just like everybody else. Can a clean thing come out of an unclean thing? No, not one. In sin did my mother conceive me. In transgression was I born. And it says the transgressor, it begins to transgress from the point of birth. It says when that sinner, when he recognizes and uh, he turns, he repents, there'll be joy in heaven for you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 is still basically saying the same thing. Uh, repetition makes for emphasis. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. The sinner that comes and he says, Lord, you know all things. You know me more than I know myself. And whatever I look like on the outside, you know my heart, you know my thoughts, you know my feelings, you know my secret actions, Lord, I am the guilty one. And I look at Christ on the cross of Calvary who died for me. I turn. I change. I return. I repent. 
That's how salvation comes. And there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Now, there are people, if you want to give your life to Christ, you want him to be your savior, you want him to be the Lamb of God who died for you. Raise up your hand, you're willing to repent, you're willing to turn, and you're willing that the grace of God will come to you and change your life. Raise up your hand, then looking at, you know, their right, any other person raising up their hand before I can raise up my hand, I don't want to be the only one. Is there any other one there? And they stretch their neck and look, and if they cannot see anyone, then they say, okay, I'll not be the only one, but... There is joy in heaven over one sinner, one sinner, one sinner. The one that says, I want to get to that endless happiness and I want to make the decision now. It doesn't matter whether others are responding or not. It doesn't matter whether others are going to assent, consent and do what I do. I make up my mind. I will be the one sinner. Uh, that's the way. He doesn't want us to come in the crowd. And then while the crowd is moving, then we're moving. But you are that one. And you say, I give my life to Christ. I turn. I repent. And all those things of the past, I will never do them again. Your salvation will come. Amen. I said your salvation will come. And the angels of God over you will rejoice. Now, what's repentance? What I used to smoke, I smoke them no more. What's repentance? What I used to drink, that scatters my brain, I drink them no more. The nightclub, I used to go. It's not, you know, I've been going to the nightclub. I come to a crusade. I raise up my hand. And then after the crusade, I go to a nightclub. There's no repentance there. If there's no change, if there's no transformation, if you're still like you were before, if you trust in Moses like you trusted in Moses before, and then you just add Christ so that Moses is 90 percent, Christ, come, come, join Moses. I give you 10 percent of my life. Jesus will not be a party to that. But you forsake the past and you say Christ and Christ alone, the Savior, the one that died on the cross of Calvary, he and he alone. 100% of my heart, 100% of my trust, 100% of my faith. That's when there will be joy in heaven. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, I will arise. This is a prodigal son. I will arise. This is the prodigal man. I will arise. This is the prodigal woman. I will arise. This is the prodigal cult member. I will arise. This is the prodigal evil person. I've gone into the far country. I've done what I shouldn't have done. I've been where I shouldn't have been. I, personal, personal, personal. You must take that decision personally and you must not think of what will the people who knew me before what will they say i will arise and go to my father and i will say unto him father i not we i not the people i met in the far country i won't accuse them that they polluted me they took my money they took my property i will not accuse anyone they made me to sign something and they made me to make a covenant uh-uh they might have introduced me to that i was the one that decided i have sinned against heaven and before thee, look at verse 19, and I am no more worthy. I am no more worthy. You know the people that come to God and they say, God, I hear that you want people for salvation. You want people for emancipation. All right. 
I want to do you a favor so that you'll not be sad, you'll not be, you know, unhappy that after all the preparations and everything they made, that nobody came. Okay, I came to, you know, give attention to what you've said. Uh, just because I want to have pity on you, God doesn't need your pity. It is you that have sinned. And then you know that you are not worthy. That God will give you grace. That God will give you mercy. What a great, great manifestation of his love. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And then in verse 20, and he arose. I will arise. That's intention. And he arose, that is action, intention, I will arise. That doesn't make it. I will change, that's intention. I will give it a thought, that is not a decision. I will consider it, that's just intention. It is when action meets intention, the salvation will come. That justification will come. He arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way up, his father saw him and had compassion on him. The father, heavenly father, has been waiting for you. I lost my people. I said the heavenly father has been waiting for you. And as you make up your mind and you are saying, what this preacher is saying is true. I've spoiled my life. I've messed up my life. Think about it. I've gone that way. I've gone that way. Think about it. I'm like an angel in the public, a devil in the private. Think about it. I've spoiled everything that I had. I am a sinner. While you are hearing, while you are considering, while you are saying, yes, Lord, I will arise. Once they finish the preaching, and they make the altar call, I'm not going to wait for any other person. I'm not going to, you know, pump up myself, and I'm not going to, you know, elevate myself to the place I wasn't. I will arise and I will go and I will say, I am here. I want forgiveness tonight. It will come to you. Amen. I said, it will come to you. Amen. And his father saw him afar off and his father then had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He received him. The Lord will receive you tonight. It will forgive you tonight. It will justify you tonight. It will change your life tonight. In Jesus' name. And then the joy of the Lord will be your heart. Look at Acts chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 3 there. Acts chapter 15. We're looking at verse 3. And being brought on their way by the church. They passed through Phoenicia. And Samaria declaring the conversion, declaring the conversion, declaring the conversion, the repentance on their own part brought conversion, transformation, new life from the hand of God. Now, when it says declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, if those Gentiles, before Paul got to them, they were sacrificing to idols and then. After Paul had preached to them, they keep on sacrificing to idols. There will be no conversion. If those people that had occultic magical arts before Paul came, after Paul ministered to them, they continued with their magical arts, their occultic arts, and their talisman, there's no conversion there. If those people who had been criminals and violent and evil, if before Paul came, they were violent and they were bad, they were evil. Before Paul came, they had their nightclubs. If after Paul came and left, they continued with their violence, 
violence and fighting and adultery and fornication and filthiness. There's no conversion there. But the joy of the people of God is that Paul came to them. He met them in darkness and he told them about Jesus, the light of the world. And they came out of darkness and they came into the light. That's the conversion of the Gentiles. As you are here, the same word is coming to you. And that same word will lead you to repentance. And then uh, what you want before you are no more, there is a new life, there is a new trust, there is a new faith, there is a new conviction. And you are following now a new path that leads to eternal endless happiness. And then it says, and they cause great joy unto all the brethren. The, the thing that brings the joy is the conversion. Tonight, your life will create joy in heaven. Your response will create joy in heaven. When you say bye-bye to the works of the flesh, Bye-bye to the works of darkness. Bye-bye to the attitude and the action of the animal, of the beast. And then uh, there's a total change by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. There will be joy on earth for you. Joy in heaven for you. And your name will be written in the book of life. Amen. Amen. Number two now. We're coming to number two. Popular emulations that destroy enduring health. Now, the health we're talking about here, the health of the body, that's true. The health of the soul. The health of the spirit. The health of your mind. There are some things that destroy the health of our lives and their emulations. You see, man does not feel that he can do anything of himself. And therefore, he becomes a copycat. He becomes a person, he watches people, he uses bad language, he emulates them. He watches people, he drink that thing that will make the brain hot. He emulates them. They take the cigarette, and then when they see other people, they take marijuana, they emulate the copy. They see other people, Going to, you know, some nice places. And then uh, they go there to do evil. Don't they know that it's evil? Yes, they know. Why do they do it? I learned of a man who went to the brothel. Wanting to have carnal hellish pleasure with one of the people that will sell their bodies. And as he was looking for which one will give him attention, he saw there his own son and said, my son, what are you doing here? And the son replied and said, daddy, what are you looking for here? What you came for is what I came for. You are my father. You are doing it. I emulate you too. The father knew that it's wrong. And yet, we do what is wrong because we emulate the wrong person in life. And then we're wondering, the mother is asking the daughter, my daughter, why are you doing that? And says, Mommy, you can talk to me, but you too, you do it. Why are you doing that? Son, why are you doing that? Daddy, 
Let me ask you the same question. Why are you doing that? Emulation. Emulation. And it's popular all over the world that we find people who copy others, who emulate others in things that are bad and they destroy enduring health. Look at Psalm 106, verse 35. It says, But they were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. Mingled among the heathens and they learned their works. I learned of a young man, good man, religious, nice, and went to the college and university and then came across gang, cult, and mingled with them and learned to sacrifice for them. Handed over his life, her life to the devil. The emulation that destroys your future that destroys your personality, that destroys your progress in life. They were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. But tonight, emancipation has come. Yes. You will come out of all those things you emulate and the power of the Lord will break every chain, every shackle, every fetter in your life, in Jesus' name. I want you to look at something about emulation. It's in Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 19, but I'll pick it off from verse 20. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, it tells us in verse 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery of the flesh, don't tell me you are spiritual and you have adultery it's of the flesh. Don't tell me you speak in tongues and then you have adultery. It's of the flesh. The works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Look at verse 20. It says idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, emulations. Emulations is right there in between the idolatry and the witchcraft and the hatred and the wrath and the strife and the sedition and the heresies. Emulations, popular emulations, the things that people do, the places that people go, emulations. Look at verse 21. It says, envies and murders and drunkenness, revelings and such like. Look at this. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, all those emulations and copying and looking at, you know, the emulations now, you look at you know, all those bad, bad things on the internet and you copy and you emulate. Some people even get husbands from the, you know, internet now. They get wives from the internet now. And, uh, you know, they see all those things and other people give. And you know how I got my own, how I got my own. And then there's emulation. All those bad, polluting, popular emulations will not allow the people who do that to get to the kingdom of God. But you will get to the kingdom of God. I will get there. I said, I will get there. You know what you have to do? All those emulations tonight, I said tonight, I said tonight, you cancel them out of your life. A new life will come. Life in Christ. Life by the emancipator. 
life by the Lamb of God that died for us and made sacrifice for all our sins tonight. As you drop all those popular things and you say, Lord, I come, I want joy in my heart, joy in my soul, joy in my spirit, joy of heaven dropping down in my heart, that joy will come. The goodness of the Lord, the grace of God will manifest in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Popular emulations. Some people don't know how to differentiate between something that is popular and what is profitable. And I can tell you, most popular things in the world are not profitable. They are not profitable for your soundness. For your health, for your salvation, and for your, for your heavenward journey. But we come and we say today, as we hand over, as we surrender our lives to the Lord, all those bad things of the past, they'll be cancelled in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are still there with me and you are going to do what the Lord is telling you tonight, Amen! Amen. I come to number three now. Number three, we're looking at promises. The promises we embrace. The promises that God has given that we embrace. And those promises determine our everlasting habitation. Everlasting habitation. Where the promise of eternal life. And that eternal life is yours as you turn away from your past and turn away from your sin. And you turn unto the Lord and you say, Lord, I believe for me you died. For me, you made the sacrifice. For me, you gave, you provided what Moses in the law could not provide. And that promise of everlasting life will be yours tonight. The promise of justification, the promise of conversion, the promise of salvation, the promise of a new life. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature, old things have passed away. Behold, how many things have become new? Tell me, tell me, all things will become new in your life. Your heart new, your thoughts new. The direction of your life, new. Your behavior, new. Your character, new. The Lord will do it tonight. Titus chapter 1, we're reading from verse 2. Titus chapter 1, verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began before the world began before moses was born before the world began before those animal sacrifices before the world began before all that religion that people are holding on to which cannot save this promise of eternal life, that eternal life will come through Jesus Christ. Salvation will come through Jesus Christ. Justification will come through Jesus Christ. Emancipation will come through Jesus Christ. Eternal life will come through Jesus Christ in hope. Of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. And that which the Lord promised before the world began is what is presented to you tonight. And as you come and you say, yes, now I understand. And God had you in mind to provide that eternal life everlasting life justification salvation redemption as you know god at you in mind and now it says whosoever will 
may come. Whosoever will. You want it, you can come. It says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's true to call upon the name of the Lord. It says, whosoever comes to me, I will for no reason push him away. I will not reject him. He will receive you. He will accept you. It will forgive you. It will change your life. It will turn your life around. Angels are watching now. And there is joy in heaven. Over one sinner who repents tonight. God will rejoice on your behalf. Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary will rejoice because of you. And the angels who have been watching the effect of the sacrifice of Christ as you come and you are the candidate of salvation tonight, angels will rejoice because of you. And the church, the true church, the Bible-believing church will rejoice because of you. Are you there? Yeah. Where are you? Okay, I see you there. Hi, but in my front, where are you? Are you there? Are you in, there in body but not in spirit? Are you there physically but you are not there spiritually? Are you there? Are you there? Your salvation has come. Yeah. Your sanctification has come. Yeah. Your redemption has come. Yeah. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You know, not the work of your hand can in any way save you. Not the tears on your face can in any way save you. Not your good works can in any way save you. But Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary, he is the only one, the only name that can save. It's about the nice closed. You want this forgiveness, this salvation, this justification, that Moses cannot give, that Aaron cannot give, that, Mo that David cannot give, that no prophet of the Old Testament of the present day can give. The salvation that only Christ can give. You want that now? Very simple. Raise up your hand there and say, Lord, I am here today. I will not go without this salvation. Raise up that hand. Make it a day you mean this now with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. As you are raising up your hand, you will stand up, you say, I want to identify myself to now I understand that this is the only way for me to be saved. And I give myself to Christ tonight. Angels recognize true repentance and false repentance. Angels recognize the repentance that comes from the heart and the one that comes from the lips. But they will only rejoice if your repentance is genuine. That you say, Lord, I abandon the evil ways. I abandon the night clubs. I abandon the fornication. I abandon the popular emulations. I abandon all the works of the flesh, all the works of darkness. And I surrender my life unto Christ. Stand up, stand up. He's waiting for you. And he'll give you the power. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the grace. You'll come into new life. While you are there, quietly tell the Lord there, O oh Lord, I'm sorry for all the bad things I've done in the past. I come to you now, depending not on myself, depending not on religion, depending on Christ, 
and Christ alone. Save me, Lord. Turn me around. Touch my life. Grant me definite, proper repentance. And I will not go back to do civil things anymore. By your grace, by your power, and by your cleansing. I'm praying for you now. Keep on standing, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your compassion. And we are asking that, Lord, you forgive everyone that truly really repents now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that genuine salvation, real conversion, and real transformation of life and of heart will come to everyone now in Jesus' name. Give them the joy of salvation, the peace in salvation, the new life in salvation, the grace in salvation. And Lord, I pray, heaven will rejoice because of every one of them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. A good alpha location resounding. Amen. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they'll take your details. What are you just with you? Because you have come to the real salvation and conversion of the Lord. We'll call on our moderating pastor tonight to take over this session. And then after that, we'll come for the miracle prayer. Praise the Lord. You are welcome into the family of God. As we have heard, heaven is rejoicing because of you. Our counselors are beside you there now. The member of the choir, please could you please join the counselors. Don't sit down yet. You will give the details, your name, your telephone number, the 11 digits, and if you are watching over television or through WhatsApp, please, this is a crucial time. You are welcome into the family of God. You will see the number on your television. You need to pick and through that, get what is going on in the location now, get it done. And if you are connected anywhere, globally, heaven is rejoicing because of you. Angels are rejoicing because of you. This is a crucial time. You are welcome into the family of God. No movement yet, because our Father in the Lord is coming back with the mantle of heaven to kick away the problems from your life. But before he does that, if you are giving your life to Jesus, Give the detail to the, can the counselors with you there now. Your name, your contact address, have that done. So that more can see come to you. You can be visited. With that, you can be taken care of spiritually. Get that done now. Give your name. You are born again now. So you give correct name, correct telephone numbers. God is going to bless you as you are doing that. Counselors, a soul is so precious. You must reach out to everyone. If you are in the car park, anywhere around this Alpha location, even the, 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 the counselors have not attended to you, Raise up your hand. You are important. Welcome into the family of God. It is wonderful to be saved. And it is wonderful to, ident to be identified with the body of Christ. Give your name. Give your contact address. And anywhere you are watching... 
globally. This is precious time now. Get involved. Don't be missed out. Counselors, please let's reach out to everyone, young and old. It's glorious to be part of the body of Christ. Global audience, please get the same thing done. The number that you see on your screen now, you get connected to that. The number plus two, three, four, nine, one, five, four, 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 four. Nine two three four six three. Counselors, please reach out to these our wonderful brethren whom the Lord has brought into the fold. If you have not been identified, please indicate. So that you can be seen and you can be attended to. Understand you are precious to the Lord. The angels are rejoicing because of your decision tonight. Great decision. Glorious decision. And don't go yet because the reign of miracle is coming down. After this, our Father in the Lord is coming back. And tonight, you are going to have testimony. Tonight, you are going to receive your healing. That mountain in your life must move. While we are attending to the, to the converts, I will ad advise you bow down your head and begin to communicate with heaven. That tonight, Lord, let it be my night. Tonight, Lord, let it be my night. The night of total emancipation. And our comfort, I mean the comfort of the Lord, our brethren who are joining the church of the Lord, universal church. Be identified. If I were you, I would be praying now. I would be waiting in anticipation that at the power of the Lord will roll down the miracles that I will not miss my own. Counselors, Let's make sure we attend to everyone. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. I will not miss it. I will not miss my miracle. The power that rose Last rush from the grave is available tonight. Begin to present your request to the Lord. Remember the congregational song we sang. I must tell Jesus. Begin to tell Jesus now before our Father in the Lord comes up. Counsel us, please. If you have not been attended to, could you please just wave your hand to those counselors and hands.
The greatest blessing you are receiving here is that salvation of your soul. Give the details. Give the telephone number, 11 digit. Let it be completed. And as you are giving your, your life to the Lord tonight, remember tomorrow, 3 p.m., their special period is for you. Just at the back of the congregation here by, your, by my left side, lunch hour with Jesus. And you will not be disappointed. You will be happy. Counselors, let's know. I have not been attended to. Could you please raise up your hand? If you have given your life to Jesus Christ. Counselor, don't leave anyone unattended to. As the counselor attends to those newcomers, you are there. Be communion with Christ because tonight the Lord will remember you. Those who are far behind and those who are towards the car park. Please let's attend to every one of them. As soon as you finish attending to them all, please let out the signal. Because tonight is your night. You will jubilate. You will rejoice. The counselor should land up now. Let's all stand up. Okay, we can see the flag. Our father is here already. Rise up. It is time to receive. Praise the Lord. My time has come. Personal, personal emancipation from every sickness, every infirmity, every plague, Amen. every satanic attack, personal emancipation is coming your way where are you you know you have to personally understand that this time of prayer is particularly for you and then as you hear the final amen you check up yourself you have been healed you have been delivered. Speak the word only. I will be healed. You have any challenge? You lay one hand 
if possible, when you have the challenge, then you raise up the other hand instantaneously, immediately, the power of the Lord will work in your life. Are you ready? Heaven is ready for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you already. We glorify you already. We give the praise to you already for what you are doing in every life right now. Here at the Alpha location, all over our country, every congregation where we are connected together, those who are individuals and they are connected all over Africa, beyond Africa. Lord, I pray right now, I send forth your emancipation, your healing to everyone in Jesus' name. Yeah. To their blind eyes, open their blind eyes. The deaf and the dumb, release them. They will care and speak in Jesus' name. Swelling anywhere in the body. Lord, I pray your mighty power will deflate that swelling. They will be totally healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever stage of the cancer, whatever pain, whatever you are going through now, I send forth the healing streams into your body. Amen. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are lame, those who have broken bones, those who have one leg shorter than the other, one arm shorter than the other, stroke, arthritis, be healed in Jesus' name. Bad eyesight, demon eyesight, total blindness. I pray for you right now. Receive your sight. Those blind eyes, I command you, be opened and see bright clearly now in Jesus' name. Lord, whatever the challenge, whatever the sickness, whatever the infirmity, Lord, I pray you give them a miracle, healing, deliverance, touch right now. On my right, healing miracle. To my front, to the back, miracle and healing. Yeah. To the left, deliverance, healing, miracle in Jesus' name. Yeah. Online, everywhere, as you connect with Christ now. You are connected with miracle. Yeah. With healing. Yeah. With deliverance. Yeah. Confirm it in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Check up yourself there. The healing is there. The miracle is there. You have a testimony. Check up yourself.